So who we think we are at the moment is not who we are. Who do we think we are? All of us have a sense of identity. And our sense of identity in this world is bound up with the internal dialogue that is continuously going on, even into our dreams. That internal dialogue is continuously running. Why? Because it is an entity known as a hunkara in Sanskrit and clearly elucidated um, and translated in English as false ego or the sense of me that is not real. It's not actually the real you, but it's who you think you are. And it's, uh, for all intents and purposes, that internal dialogue that is talking to you constantly. I am me. I want to do something enjoyable today and tomorrow and now. What am I going to do to enjoy myself today? How can I operate in this world to have some good time? This voice that's advising us like that, and then there are many suggestions. Uh, get a good looking girlfriend, get a good looking boyfriend, uh, get a boyfriend who's very entertaining because you like to have fun and, and laugh, or vice versa, get a girlfriend like that. Uh, get some money so that you can have a nice environment for your enjoyable pastimes. So many things that were being advised by this internal dialogue. I don't like this person, I do like that person. Uh, or I didn't like what that person said. Constantly, we're, we, there's a never-ending stream of internal dialogue. And according to the sages, we think that that is us. But actually, it's not us. It was created by Krishna to allow us to try and enjoy this world selfishly. That means that we've come to this world to be the centre of our own drama. And everyone in the Mahatattva, it's not just me or, or you or you, everyone in this creation, including the animals and the insects, they're all living in a paradigm where they are the central character in this uh, drama. All these thoughts that are coming through the ego um, are linked to Maya. They're linked to the material world and the suggestions are all based on some form of manipulation of the external environment for our gratification. So for all intents and purposes, this is the realm, Mahatattva, or the illusory world, is the realm of exploitation for uh, gratifying me as the most important character in the play, if you like. And as long as you're in that consciousness, you generate what is called in Sanskrit karma. That means as long as you think that you are the central character in life, all your choices and activities generate a karmic reaction, which means that everything you choose and everything you do creates a projection into the womb of this material universe that bears fruit and reflects something back to you. Either unpleasant or pleasurable, or neutral. But what the sages are trying to explain, and we, we've become used to this way of living. All of us in this world have lived many lives, according to the sages, in this materialistic paradigm, and we're used to this way of living, and we think that this is reality. Whereas actually it's a projection of the ego, false ego, through the mind. So if this isn't reality, if this sense of me, who I think I am, this internal dialogue that's going on, that's advising me how I can be happy and what I need to do to be happy, 
and my feeling that I am the central character in this play that's going on. If that's not reality, then what is reality? Well, it's clearly explained also in the Vedas. Reality is being fully present, not lost in that dialogue and that projection, that sense of who you think you are, that sense of me, not being connected to that sense of me, but rather being fully conscious. In Sanskrit, the word uses Buddha, or fully awake. And in your state of reality, of being awake, you are always fully present. You're never lost in the projections of the ego and mind. You're just always fully present. And you more and more have nothing to do with that voice, that internal dialogue that's constantly projecting ideas. But you exist as what you are, which is in Sanskrit called uh, Chaitanya. Chaitanya means uh, pure consciousness or pure awareness. And what is reality is everything that you perceive around you. Devoid of that voice that's constantly going on, without the constant absorption in the banter and the dialogue of Ahankara, which actually is just there to separate you from presentness, full awareness, and the ability to enter deeply into reality. So, in essence, what the sages are all guiding us towards is to practice becoming less and less absorbed in Ahankara, in false ego, and more and more absorbed in reality or presentness, what is going on at the present moment, 